Hi guys, it's Jax here. I'd like to introduce you to Christelle Coleman. She is the CEO of MUA Insurance. We're broadcasting live a sneak preview from Voices Club. They're having a Power Females workshop this evening where Christelle is one of the guest speakers. She's going to be chatting to us all about, what are you going to be talking to us about? The importance of um, women having financial um, independence and freedom. And also, um, how do we manage the relationships in the workplace uh, with our fellow female colleagues? Because you know, there are perceptions that we don't get on. So how do we manage that and make sure that we get the most out of Actually, I think that's really, really important. Um, you know, relationships with your fellow female colleagues in the workplace, there's a fine line between business relationships and also going too far. But I know you don't want to say too much because you're going to be talking no, about I'm it later. I'm happy to chat about that. I actually don't agree with the statement that we have to manage it. And I think it's a specific stereotype that is um, attached to women in that we can't get along in the workplace. It's not the case at all. We get along, along really, really well. And, um, and that perception is something that we need to challenge and change and make sure that we um, that we that we you know work together and show people that women are actually really great at, at working together in the workplace. So. Can I ask, do women work better together with other women, or do you think women work better together with men, or does it matter at all? <laughs> I think the best the best place to be is when we have an equal representation of men and women in the workplace. We don't have that. That's what the issue is. Women are not represented in senior management, in leadership positions, um, and it's not that we're trying to say something that's not true. It's a fact. It's out there. So um, the whole issue is to make sure that we um, that we are fully representative of the markets that we serve, and the markets we serve are men and and women who consume products who consume services. So equal representation of gender and of race is what we need to be the most successful at what we do. I totally agree with you there. Although my, my inner feminist wants to say <laughs> women are better. Um, but it's true, it's actually a fallacy in the in the workplace. Yeah. Some people say you know women are bitchy to work with and but it's not like that at all. No, I don't find it at all. And you find that women are better at certain things than, and men are better at certain things. I mean, that's just the way we made. But it's very important that, um, that we understand that it's about working together to get the most, um, the best results for our businesses and for our economies and, and all that matters. So how do you feel about, this talk about there is a big gender pay gap difference and that men get paid more, especially men who are CEOs versus women who are CEOs. Is that true? It's absolutely true. Uh, that's one of those things that we don't have to um, argue about. It's, it's the, the numbers are there. There's a huge pay gap. It can, uh, can be as much as 25% and it's not just in CEO level, it's on, on all levels. It's from ground up, uh, men get paid more to do exactly the same job. It's wrong, it should not be like that. And we as women should not be ashamed to say that it's wrong. And I think that's the issue is that we think we're not allowed to talk about this because then people think we're being a feminist and, and that's also got a certain connotation to it. We, all we're asking for is equal pay, equal rights. So can I ask at MUA, is it equal? No, it's not. <laughs> I'll tell you why. Okay. We, we have nine out of ten <laughs> of uh, my senior management team, nine women, one guy. So, um, oh, so wow. yeah, so okay. we've got a very um, female empowered organization. But it's okay. the market that we serve that requires um, more women in the Okay, so <laughs> you're saying it's different for every industry then? Yeah, oh, that's okay. absolutely different. So that's, that's fair then. It's fair if in some companies maybe there is more men who are in management versus women because it just depends on the industry. If you've got a panel meeting company, it would be very difficult for you to manage that business with a whole bunch of you know women like us. So um, that's just the way it is. Gotcha. Although I do know a female bike repairman. Repair woman. You get Sorry. these exceptional women who do these amazing things, but as a rule, um, you need to look at the market that you serve and make sure that you represent that market. Awesome. And then the other thing that Crystal is going to be talking to us tonight about is financial independence for women. Can you tell us why is that so important? Can't I just get like a rich boyfriend? That's exactly the problem that we have. <laughs> she get a sugar daddy. <laughs> that's the, you know, so that's, it, it, it all comes back to society's stereotypes around men and women. Um, we tell our girls to be pretty and our boys to be clever. And then we don't understand when we get into the workplace why are women being treated differently. We as women need to take back um, the ownership of, you know, the responsibility of managing our own personal finances. And if you have financial independence, you don't have to ask anyone anything. And that is why it's so important. We, be, we make ourselves powerless by being um, dependent on caregivers, whether it's parents or men or, you know, even, I don't know, family members or whatever. It's really important that you stand on your own feet and that you make sure that you, um, that you can look after your own needs and it gives you freedom. 
and it gives you the ability to do the things that you really love to do and not having to ask anyone anything. So. It does, but I think it's also, it's a double-edged sword, because I mean, I'll just use myself for example, when you are in that role of an independent woman and used to doing things for yourself, I remember even when I was dating, I used to say, I'll pay for half the check, you're not going to pay for me. Um, the kind of double-edged sword comes in where then they almost expect you, because women are still vulnerable, we're still emotional and we still want, even though we're fiercely independent, we still want those, you know, those moments where we're not taken care of, but spoiled in that, and I think, the double-edged sword comes in when people think, or oh, guys especially, I'm talking about my boyfriend, thinks that you can do everything for yourself and doesn't need to, you know, and, and uh, it, it's tough. Yeah, I always use it for this example. I say, I, you know, if I have a flat tire, I want my guy to change it for me, but please open the door for me when I get into the car. So I think it's all about finding that balance. But when it comes, when it comes to financial independence, so when you're financially independent, that doesn't mean you can't accept a gift from your, your partner or let him pay for your overseas trip or whatever, but you must never be dependent on someone else for your financial well-being. You must be able to make your own decisions and you must be able to, when you get into a position where you're not feeling safe or you're not feeling happy, that you must be able to make that move onto something else. And that's where the independence part comes in. That's where the part comes in where you go, money is power. The power to be independent, and that's what we need to strive for as women. And we need to teach our daughters that's yes. what we have to do, not to find yes. a rich sugar day. Yes. No, I think, yeah, I think, especially for girls in university, there's a lot of, um, there's been a lot of articles written, and I don't know how true it is, but the girls who go to universities these days all dating older guys mm. to buy them nice things. Mm. And, and you're right, we need to educate from a, a younger age so that we don't sit with the problem later down the line, you know, a woman who's in her 30s, 40s, and then trying to find someone to marry to look after her. Yeah. That's so important and it's, it's again it comes back to how we um, classify um, gender in society. So um, the, na the natural thing is to go your daughter must put the dishes in the dishwasher because that's what yeah. we do or, but we all do it you know it's normal in society and then the son grows up thinking it's okay for him to sit back while his sister is cleaning the dishes. When they grow up that's where we end up. We end up in the kitchens, we end up having to do everything and have careers and be moms and then we can't understand why we struggle so much. No no we take turns in my household. Oh, you actually, if I cook, really he does the dishes. Woman. Exactly. Exactly. That's what it's about. If you don't do the dishes, I'm not cooking. That's just how That's I roll. Right. <laughs> so guys, I am going to sign off because I am not going to spoil the whole workshop. You should be here at 117 Devonta Cat in Cape Town and come and check out this amazing talk, Power Females. If you are a lady watching this, come down and meet Christelle in person. Thank you, Christelle. Thank you. Thank you.